That's right. Arnor Horror Hunter, aka Steve, back at you yet again with another video. And I have a beverage here. You, know, you guys definitely know what that means. This means I'm going to be doing a vlog, and this is going to be the first vlog in my series of Sabbath Day vlogs. Now, this is not really a Sabbath day for me. Uh, I just kind of got out early today uh, from work and college and crap like that. So today is my day to do stuff, you know, of course work on <laughs> papers and such like that. But right now, I'm going to enjoy a nice beverage of sweet tea. Delicious. And I'm just going to let the ideas flow in this vlog here. So, first off, I want to get started. Uh, one thing I did want to mention is, uh, um, of course, I haven't been doing a whole lot of videos lately. And um, you may ask yourself, hasn't there been a lot of movies, or haven't there been a lot of movies, that have piled up on your uh, list of movies to do for updates and stuff like that. And yeah, you're right. You're right. Steve here, he does definitely have a lot of movies he would like to show you. There's just so many that I've picked up since I did, like, my last few videos. And, uh, well, besides, of course, the, uh, um, horror battle that I did for Late Night Pride to check him out. But, um, you know, it just seems like, uh, it just seems like a waste because it's just going to be so long and stuff like that. It's going to be a really, really long video. It's just going to be me showing you stuff. So, you know, I, I just don't really think I should. Uh, but I might hit on a few highlights. Definitely, you know what, right here I'll, I'll hit on a few highlights. Definitely one of the big highlights is uh, not one that I actually have in yet. I ordered the Halloween Complete Collection uh, just recently. Went ahead and picked that up uh, because, you know, I, I, I bowed to the pressure, man. Uh... I, I love Screen Factory releases, I love Anchor Bay's older releases and stuff like that, so why I thought, why not go ahead and just splurge once for this month and uh, go ahead and buy the Halloween Complete Collection, because I looked at the list of extras, the transfers and stuff like that, and I was like, you know what, I mean, there's a lot of things that culminate into making me want to buy this. Uh, I don't own any of the Halloween movies on Blu-ray, for one. Uh, second off, the pricing of it. Uh, I mean, if you go back and just look at how many movies that is, alright, this is, uh, if you're just getting the theatrical releases, this is ten movies, and you're, and, you know, if you subtract maybe, like, whatever, I, I don't really want to do math, but it ends up being, like, ten, twelve bucks per movie anyway. So, I was thinking, you know, just pick that out, Plus all these extras, the cool collection quality of it, uh, the fact that it is going to be a Screen Factory release, an Anchor Bay older time version, you know, older style release. Uh, you know, you get all that stuff, put it together, and it just, it really makes me want to buy it. Uh, I didn't buy the Halloween Complete Collection, uh, not Halloween, but uh, the Friday the 13th Complete Collection box set. Uh, that was mostly because I just didn't have the money at the time. Nowadays, I realize it's like 9, 80, 90 bucks, uh, so I might pick that up. I've, I've heard bad things about it, or, you know, just overall mediocre things about it, but, you know, I'm, I might go ahead and pick that up sometime, too. Uh, not in the very near future, but maybe sometime, I don't know, maybe around Christmas, something like that. Christmas, um, maybe as the new year rolls by. <sighs> Delicious. You guys, uh, if any of you guys are uh, Southerners and don't like sweet tea, you're not actually a Southerner. And if you're a Northerner and like sweet tea, you do have a little bit of Southern in you. I'm, I guarantee you. Delicious. But, um, so we got that. Picked up the uh, Night of the Demons Blu-ray by Scream Factory recently. Um, really enjoyed that. Uh, I haven't looked at all the special features. I've looked at most of the stuff, you know, the big documentaries, some of the interviews, um, one of the commentaries. I know there's actually another one that I need to watch as well, but, you know, 
what I've seen so far. It's it's a great release, and I'll definitely recommend it to you. Night of the Demons, the movie itself, is just a lot of fun. It's a fun little uh, 80s horror flick. Reminds me a little bit of a... Um, and I wasn't really... I, I didn't really know this, that it was kind of related to this movie. But, I mean, for some reason, it reminds me a little bit of Evil Dead. And I kind of compare them. And, uh, you know, for the longest time, Evil Dead has been, you know, just one of those really good possession-type movies. Uh, you know, possession movies where you use a lot of special makeup effects, stuff like that. Um, it was a really big highlight for me. Uh, not one of my favorite horror movies ever, but definitely one of my favorite possession horror movies. And, uh, you know, I think Night of the Demons has surpassed it, or at least it's surpassed the original. I don't know about Evil Dead 2, maybe Army of Darkness, not sure, but uh, I'm definitely going to have to be putting uh, Night of the Demons um uh, in the running for that. So, next up, uh, what can I talk about other than that? Uh, oh, picked up a Planet of the Apes uh, DVD. Planet of the Apes, just being one of my favorite sci-fi movies ever. Uh, next to Star Wars, probably my favorite sci-fi franchise, and I haven't even seen all the films. I, mo actually. I'm going to be totally honest, the only films that I've seen have been the last two that they've done, Rise and Dawn, uh, the original, and uh, the um, Escape from the Planet of the Apes. So, um, you know, add both of those together, I mean, all four of those together, and it's a pretty darn good franchise, me just seeing those. I know there were sort of mediocre ones uh, thrown in the mix there. But, you know, I really like the Planet of the Apes franchise thus far, as far as I've watched them. Planet of the Apes uh, DVD I picked up was just the original. It was just the original DVD. And, um, to be honest, uh, I mean, it, it's it's a pretty good release, but, you know, I, I would have liked the picture quality to be better. I know it's a DVD release, and actually this must have been, I think, uh, 2003, 2005, maybe? Not sure, but one of those. Uh... Yeah, just not great picture quality or anything, but, you know, it's a good release in its own right. It's got um, the uh, Behind the Planet of the Apes documentary, so. Oh, I do have one thing to show you. Another one over here. Look at that. I got this. Zombies eat brains, so you're safe. <laughs> I found it funny, guys. I was at a, um, I was at a, uh, uh, a fair, county fair, and uh, they had a they had this thing set up. You could throw darts at balloons, and if you got a balloon, you got a little poster. Easy freaking game. Uh, cool little poster. I've actually seen a shirt of this, but you know, shirts are more expensive than a two dollar throw to get this. And you know, it's got a frame around it. Not really a good frame or anything, but it's got a frame around it. Uh, and it's got a uh, and it's got a cool little poster. So I might be hanging that up for right now. It is sitting on top of this thing here, though. So uh, yeah, who knows? For now, I'm just gonna set it down here. I really need to clean up a uh, little movie area here. Ah. Let's see, what else can I talk about? Oh, might talk about uh. You know, I've been getting an urge to do this lately. I've been getting an urge to do kind of a uh, reviewage of some uh, four packs, like four packs or multi packs. You know what I mean? Cheap little things, uh, cheap little sets of DVDs. Usually, you can get them in four in uh, Blu-rays too. But uh, the most popular thing is, you know, and I'm not talking box sets. I'm talking four, five, six, eight pack movies of just the cheapest little pieces of crap movies that you've ever seen, uh, sitting in the Walmart dump bins, in the, uh, in the dollar stores, and sitting up at Kmart and stuff like that. Uh, I've been kind of wanting to do a, a little bit of a review kind of thing on that. And, uh, you know, I've got one that I'm, uh, I'm pretty satisfied with. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go uh, pick that up for y'all. You'll just please stare at my back for a while there, and I'll be back in a second. How do you doing that Ric Flair strut, boys? Where is it, man? Where did I put these things? 
Aha! Now, these are things that I, uh, I picked up two of these little series of, uh, if, if you may, I mean, if you will, or whatever, of, uh, of four packs in total. Uh, I have volume one, and, uh, this here is volume three. Uh, it's just four packs of, uh, like, older horror movies, or really just horror movies. Uh, kind of saw them at, um... Uh, dollar store. I think they came out sometime around 2010, 2009, something like that. But I've just seen them around sometimes. Uh, bought my first one up at uh, the dollar store, up at uh, Dollar General, uh, Southern Chain, created here in my beautiful home state of KY, Kentucky. KY Jelly. It's actually marmalade from Kentucky. Anyway, I just thought I'd slip that in. Old John Reap joke there. Um, so there you go. I've got I've got this four pack that I bought over at uh, the Dollar General, and now I picked up a second one, uh, just as one of a. I guess this is sort of an update, but not really. But um, I've been uh, I, I've been checking out even more stuff at uh, Dan's Pawn Shop, guys, because I love Dan's Pawn Shop, and now I've got a relative that works there, so I get. Uh, all right, so the original price of the movies is two bucks. I get it for half price because I know a guy. So that ends up one buck per movie makes me happy. Get this thing off my screen right here. Remind me later. Don't even know what that is. Should have looked at it, but it'll remind me later apparently. Anyway, so here is that four pack I was talking about. This is the volume three of it. It is the four movie thrills and chills collection. Thrills and chills, baby. Anyway. This has got, as you can see, sort of from the cover, it's got The Craft, Monster High, Fright Night, and Brain Scan. So I'm just going to go over this just a little bit. Maybe this is a prelude to sort of a series that I might be doing on some cool four-packs, some of my favorite four-packs, or just cool multi-packs in general. So first off, I want to talk about The Craft. The Craft... I already owned that, actually, uh, before I picked up this four-pack. I really got it for the other three movies. And even more, in more specific, uh, I got it for Fright Night, because I haven't actually owned Fright Night ever on anything else besides this thing. So, but The Craft, it's a cool little witch movie, supernatural, PG-13 kind of movie, uh, 1996. Right, this is Nev Campbell right before she got big with Scream and uh, Party of Five and stuff like that. Um, her first Canadian production, actually. And, uh, you know, it's it's a good little movie. It's got uh, Faruja Balk. I think that's how you pronounce her name. Faruja Balk, or something like that. Yeah. Faruja Balk. Anyway. Robin Tooney, uh, Rachel True, as well as Nev Campbell. And uh, they're just this group of uh, high school girls that go to a Catholic high school. None of them really sit, uh, fit in. And they realize that they're witches or some crap like that. Very flimsy plot. Not very good. But, you know, it's a Nev Campbell movie. And I can't really go wrong with Nev Campbell. I actually really like her performance in here. But, you know, everybody else, it's just, it's pretty mediocre. Skeet Orch is in it. He does okay. But, you know, other than other than Nev and uh, uh, Skeet Orch, really not that good of a movie. Uh, I guess it's well-directed. It's got some nice special effects for 1996, but overall, just, you know, sort of disappointing, I guess. Monster High, uh, man, I watched this, and, ah, oh, man, it really, I, it didn't do it for me, man. It was, uh, you know, I like B-movies, and I sometimes like some sleazy movies, but I'm gonna be honest, this is one of the sleaziest, cheesiest movies I think I have ever seen in my life. And it's, uh, I honestly think the movie was only made to show boobs. That's pretty much the only reason I think they made this movie. I'm sort of realizing it looks a little bit like my camera is, uh, is, um, uh, out of focus. But I don't know. Maybe it's just, maybe it's the lighting. I don't know. I think it's more the lighting, but I'm not sure. 
anyway, you know, this is how these vlogs are going to go, guys. There's going to be technical problems, and I'm not going to care about it. No editing in here. I almost never edit my videos. But anyway, back to Monster High. I mean, it's, it's an alien movie, and yet it's got, like, these other weird elements in it, like resurrections and stuff like that, and really, really bad acting, and... Um, actually, I looked it up on IMDb after I watched it, and, uh, there are actually, for the girls who did the nude scenes, uh, they were all extras, because none of the girls who were actually in the movie wanted to do this graphic nudity that they had to do, and, uh, you know, <laughs> it's hilarious. They call them featured extras, quote-unquote featured extras. They certainly were featured, I will give you that. But, uh, yeah, uh, crappy movie, only made to show boobs. That's the only reason this movie was made. Crappy special effects. Uh, I could see why somebody might like it, if you're into that really sleazy kind of stuff. But, you know, I, it just didn't do it for me. Fright Night has to be the best pick out of all of them in here. Fright Night, obviously, a vampire classic that most people already know about anyway. But, uh, Fright Night's just something that, you know, it's a lot of fun to watch. Um, it's nice to pick apart, too, because, you know, not too many plot holes or anything. Uh, just overall a really good horror movie. And, uh, I think one of the best horror movies, uh, or best vampire movies of the 1980s. Um, you know, you got your Holy Trinity, you've got, uh, or Unholy Trinity, whichever way you want to look at it. Uh, of vampire movies in the 80s, and you got Fright Night, Near Dark, and The Lost Boys. Now, The Lost Boys was my favorite for a long time, but I think Fright Night has slightly surpassed it. And, uh, actually, I saw Near Dark a while back, and, you know, I think that uh, Near Dark and Fright Night are about on the same level. But, uh, I've loved both of those movies. Actually, I love all three, but, you know, Fright Night... Fright Night's definitely got something going for it. Uh, and I really enjoy the way that it was made, and it's got a fun amount of, um, you know, just fun content in it and stuff like that. Uh, of course, Fright Night has, like, one Blu-ray release, and it's impossible to find. I think it was Code Red. Uh, correct me on that if I'm wrong, but I think it was Code Red. And, of course, Code Red runs out of releases all the frickin' time uh, because they're just short-term crap like that. Um... After that, you got Brain Scan. Pretty much, the, the villain in this is basically a Freddy clone. Uh, came out in the mid-90s. And, um, you know, it's a fun movie. Uh, I didn't like the ending too well. But the rest of the movie, overall, is a pretty darn good little piece of work. Um, definitely gets a reaction out of you as you're watching it. And, uh, you know, just a good movie overall. Fun. Uh, definitely a great little cult flick. So, Brain Scan's one that I, I really think that you guys should probably check out. Out of all four of these movies, probably the best surprise is Fright Night. Well, I, I can't really call that a surprise because Fright Night I knew was going to be at least pretty good. Something that I would enjoy with a great performance by Chris Sarandon and Roddy McDowell. But anyway... Uh, Chris Rain and Robin, Roddy McDowell do great in Fright Night, but, you know, I guess the more surprise, I was, really there were only going to be two movies that would have surprised me on here, and that was Monster High and Brain Scan, but, you know, oh, just about dropped it there, but, you know, uh, being that Monster High was so bad, probably the best, the best movie on here besides Fright Night would have to be Brain Scan, and Brain Scan's definitely one that you guys need to check out if you can. It's, uh, it's kind of like, it kind of comments on movie and video game violence, also kind of like mu uh, music violence, uh, does heavy metal, violent vid video games, and uh, violent movies. Do all of those cause kids to be violent? And I guess it kind of, it kind of comments on that, and it's interesting because I think it comments sort of in the affirmative. Because uh, you've got this character from the video game that kind of comes to life and seduces this young man into killing people and uh, changes his mind and stuff like that. 
Of course, I might be getting in there too deep. Uh, I definitely think I may be getting in there too deep for a B movie from the mid 90s, but I think it does comment on that, and it's an interesting commentary. I don't agree with it, but you know, it's a it's a good fun little flick that I think most people should just check out if you're kind of a horror sci-fi fan uh, or if you're into kind of that subject I was talking about, the violence in cinema, violence in um, uh, video games and heavy metal. If you're into that kind of stuff, uh, definitely check out Brain Scan. And just by the way, uh, I noticed on Brain Scan, I'm, I always notice these little things when I'm uh when I just happen to be watching a movie, um, I notice for like cultural hints, like hints of cultural things that I really like, and uh, on the side of this kid's refrigerator that he's got in his room, is a cutout poster of Alice Cooper from the uh, from his Hey Stupid days, and that made me happy because I love Alice Cooper, and uh, you know just. I, I get excited when I see stuff like that in movies. You know, if I see Alice Cooper in a cameo like I did in um, Wayne's World, which is actually the movie that introduced me to um, Alice Cooper. But, you know, when I see cameos like that in movies, like, say, uh, I guess a better example is actually from Wayne's World 2, where they had Charlton Heston uh, in a guest star position. Well, not really a guest star, but, you know, a cameo position. So that was, that was interesting. And, uh... You know, I always I look for those things like that because they make me happy. Uh, you know, kind of kind of gets me in a different idea here. Um, so I live in Kentucky. You guys probably know this by now, but um, something really interesting is happening in October. October is going to be well, October 11th is going to be the first time that I will get to see Alice Cooper in concert, and that is going to be make me really, really happy. Uh, Alice is coming along with Motley Crue. Uh, Motley Crue, of course, on their last tour, and I'm heading up to Louisville, and I'm going to watch Cooper and Crue break down the Freedom Center. It's going to be awesome, I guarantee you, because I've seen clips from Coop's uh, recent shows, and uh, he's doing, he's still doing good. He still rocks. So even if he does just like a half hour set, I'll be happy. If he does a ten minute set, I'll be happy just to have seen him live. Because uh, Coop's getting up there in years, and though I I don't think he's ever gonna retire, but I think that I mean he's old, and as as bad as I hate to say it, the guy could die tomorrow. So um, hey, if he dies tomorrow, I guess I won't even get to see him. That makes me sad all over. Anyway. Uh, but Alice Cooper, of course, one of my favorite rock stars of all time, possibly my favorite. And uh, Motley Crue, of course, you know, it's it's hard to think 80s hair metal without Motley Crue. And um, that brings me to another thing. Uh, speaking of events, I'm sorry to say that I probably will not be going to Scarefest this year. You know, it's just, I, re I really, really wanted to go this year. But the thing is, just, I haven't, I haven't really had anything, uh, that's, like, really drawing me to the thing. Uh, I'd like to get a, uh, DVD of Part 8 in the Friday the 13th series signed by, uh, Kane Hodder. Uh, and I think, I think Danielle Harris is coming, too, so I'd like to get her autograph. But, you know, other than that, there ain't really anybody that I really, really, really want to see or need to see. Uh, plus, you know, I just, I ain't, the, I ain't got the money, guys. Uh, I'm a starving college student, so I have to, uh, I have to make sure that I've got, you know, all the money and stuff that I can use on freaking food, for God's sakes. So, uh, you know, I probably won't be going to Scarefest. Uh, if it happens that they are giving away tickets on a radio show or something, I might, I'll definitely try and call in and uh, head on up there this weekend. But the thing is, uh, short of that, I'm probably not going to have the money to go. So that makes me sad. But um, you know what? I'll be okay with it. I've ordered the Halloween Complete Collection. That'll be my own personal scare fest. Uh, 
so makes me happy with that. So cheering myself up, let myself down. It's going crazy here in this uh, Sabbath day vlog, but at least I've got sweet tea. Makes me happy. I'm running low. I'm getting close to the uh, to what is basically just spit and a little bit of tea left over. Look, look at it. Look at it jiggle. Anyway, uh, might go over one more uh, quick little subject before uh, before I leave, and that is going to be that um, gonna maybe try and get into a couple new series. By series, I mean I'm going to start making hopefully more videos uh, in a more regular fashion. Um, you know, hopefully get into something like uh, review series, stuff like that. Uh, might review a couple uh, DVDs and Blu-rays and stuff like that. Uh, just editions that are coming out. Hopefully I'll pick up the Pumpkinhead uh, edition. Probably pick it up next time, uh, sometime next month. You know, when I've got the money to do so. I'm, I'm gonna, uh, I mean, I splurged this month, too, but I'm definitely splurging on, uh, on October as well, because it's October, Halloween throwing around. Man, I can look outside, and I can just smell Halloween and, and fall coming in the air, and, oh, man, just gets me, gets my motor running. We're, we're, we're on that, you know, when you're on a roller coaster, and you're clicking right up to the top, and you're just about to drop down, we're right there basically, uh, with Halloween. We're very close. And uh, as soon as October gets here, I'm really kicking into gear with the horror movies. Hopefully I'll be able to take a day off or something on Halloween and not have to do a whole lot. Maybe go to a Halloween party. I don't know. I refuse to go to any Halloween parties that don't have uh, Halloween the movie playing in the background, or at least one of the Halloween movies playing in the background. I... I, I actually uh, jumped out of a party last year because uh, they were going to refuse to have any good horror movies playing. It's funny. Uh, <laughs> um, I told this guy, he, he doesn't like horror movies, but he wanted to have a Halloween party last year. He, uh, he went ahead and had the Halloween party, and then he kind of, like, I didn't go because he wasn't going to have Halloween playing in the background or anything like that, like that, but I heard from him the, uh, the uh, following week after Halloween, I heard him saying that uh, he did actually have a horror movie playing in the background. And I asked him, oh, well, that's cool. At least he took my advice. What horror movie? And he said, The Human Centipede. That's not a movie you show at a party with a bunch of, with a bunch of people around. Uh, that is that's a shame movie that you keep in your shame drawer. You don't even display it on the movie shelf, guys. You, you put that in a drawer somewhere very very far away, and you don't ever go near it ever again. You watch it once, then you get rid of the DVD. Or if you want to keep it in your collection, you make sure that you put your H section. You know, besides the Halloween movies, because those are great. But you make sure you put most of your H section way in the back. So nobody ever has to see that you even own that thing. And heck, uh, Human Centipede 2, don't even, don't even think about it. Put it, put both of them way back there. Somewhere where nobody can see them, and nobody has to see them ever again. You probably won't want to see it anyway. Not because it's a scary movie, it's just because it's a gross movie that's just, you know, it's torture porn, basically. Kind of like some of the Saw movies became, and some of the Hostel movies became. But, uh, man, I'm going on 30 minutes, so I'd better, I'd better shut this vlog down while I can. Watch me finish the rest of my tea. <sighs> Delicious. I love tea. Anyway, guys... I hope you enjoyed the vlog. It just seems like it's been a bunch of random crap flying around out of nowhere. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. So, rock on. 
If you like, subscribe. See you later. And make sure you check the Sausage Factory out this Sunday. Not Sunday, but <laughs> Thursday. Because they're going to be doing a Robin Williams tribute. Rest in peace, sir. You are a great actor. Bye, everybody. Peace.